ACC That's as well. So 37 18, Duke on top with five minutes to go. First half. King kicks it back outside to Harris. Harris sweeps around Randolph but missed the shot. And this one is off of King out of bounds to Duke. Bob Donato making the call almost alone. And Frank Haith wants to know what's going on at the other end. Well, Frank told us before again that he tried to communicate to his guys what to expect here. And a lot of times you're not going to get, you know, some of the borderline calls go your way, which is the case in the ACC at home for everybody. A home team sometimes gets an advantage. But at the end of the day, this team has to learn to play through this. And right now it seems as though with each mounting minute to do pressure, this team just loses its focus on the offensive end. And what an intimidating place to come to. Randolph misses the jump shot. King with a rebound. Miami needs a couple of baskets here to cut into this lead before we go to the locker room at the half. Well, Guillermo Diaz on the bench. That's their leading score. Robert Height had gotten away a little bit to get an open shot. And they're looking to try to curl him again, but you got to have patience. You got to wait for Height. It's who saw him pass the ball away from him as he broke free. Anthony King dribbling against Williams who goes out to pick him up. They get it to Frisbee. A jump hook short. And Williams clears another rebound. Williams and Frisbee really going after each other right now. Well, there's no back down in William Frisbee. I mean, this is a young man again that has been a tremendous offensive rebound in fifth in the conference. You know, that's his job, to be physical, to play with intensity inside. He's a senior out of Bayshore, New York. Jump shot won't go. In fact, after a recent game, he proposed to his fiance on the court. She said yes. And see, that's what Robert Height needs to do. He needs to look to put the ball on the floor. He's another guy that's got a 39-inch vertical. Put it on the floor, get to an open spot, and elevate. That shot is yours. All you have to do is be able to make it. 7 to 20. Randolph starts down the lane and foul. Got a timeout with 2.50 to go. First half from Durham, 37 22. Davis and Doug Gottlieb coming up on the UPS halftime report. There's a log jam in the middle of the ACC. We'll examine that bubble and deliver Thursday's throwdowns. Miami's one of those teams on that ACC bubble. Team. Yeah, and you know, the last two nights we've seen Indiana and Texas A&M both in must-win games on the road. They've performed much better than Miami has so far tonight. All right, guys, 37 to 20, 250 to go here. First half, Shavard Randolph makes it an 18 point lead and here's what Doug was talking about five teams at seven and eight one of them is guaranteed to be at eight and eight because two will play that would be let's see Maryland and Virginia Tech so one of those teams has to finish eight and eight right and and I think again that that's going to be the cutoff line I mean you're looking for easy ways to make decisions on teams that are lumped together that might be the cutoff line for the tournament selection committee Miami you know, I, I know what Doug said that Miami not performing well tonight, but that's also because they're in camera against a Duke team that is better than people think. But they're still just out of rhythm right now offensively. Duke doing a terrific job keeping them off the glass. That's why they get a number of their points, 15 a game off of offensive rebound. And rare has it been for them to get offensive rebound tonight. Reddick fouled by Harris on the way in. Now the Miami's normal starting guards, this trio, Diaz, Height, and Harris, provide 67% of this club's scoring. That's the most in the ACC. Tonight, it hasn't been the case. Diaz has been limited to three. Height has half a dozen, and Harris has five. Now, that's 14 out of the 20, so it's still the same percentage, but it's only 14 points in the first half. And if those are the three guys you look to to score, and they only have 14, you're obviously in trouble. Absolutely. And again, you go back to the Duke defense. 
you know, you're not going to solely be able to play one-on-one -on -one against them. You've got to be able to beat people off the bounce, but you've got to draw defenders and kick. And Miami is not really equipped to do that. They've got supreme one-on-one -on -one players who aren't as accustomed to making the play. Right. Reddick putting up sensational numbers again. He has 18 points. Diaz trying to force it the way he has a lot of this first half, and he turns it over again. See, that was a perfect example. Going one-on-one, -on -one, drawing a defender, and instead of finding his man, he's looking to the basket. You've got to keep this defense honest. If you're going to take him off the bounce, you draw the help, and then you've got to kick to somebody that's wide open. Keep the D on it. And you watch what happens with the rest of the Miami offense. You get one guy starting to dribble the basketball, and the other four guys stand there and watch because they know it's going to be a shot and not a pass. They're fighting for that ball, and Ewing. Great pass by J.J. Redick, who had the open shot. Instead, had a man that was more open and found him. Now, Diaz quickly back the other way. Can't hit it. King, offensive rebound. He missed. Miami had a shot at that rebound. Robert Height had it, but couldn't hold it. And Frank Hayes has to be more than concerned. He was concerned for most of this game. He's got to be more than concerned right now. Because, again, even the strengths of Miami, offensive rebounding, they're just not capable of coming up with the ball. Beautiful job of sprinting the court and then makes the reverse layup off the pass from Harris. He hasn't been very good this game, but when he's good, he is spectacular. That's right. As I mentioned beginning of the telecast, the most athletic guy in the ACC in all probabilities. You see a good defensive sequence. And there's Diaz again with the ability to elevate and remain in the air. Well, let's take a look at your first team, all ACC, and I think the only surprise on here for some people would be that you have Diaz on there out of Miami. You can't argue with his numbers, Len. No, you can't. I mean, he's the second leading scorer in the ACC, and if you look at a comparison, particularly in conference games, he's averaging 21 points, four rebounds in conference games, shooting about 46%, 40% from beyond the arc. That compares very favorably with guys like J.J. Redick, Jarrett Jack, you know, John Gilchrist, Chris Paul. I mean, probably more favorably than everyone except Reddick in the points for game category. Well, as I've said for the last couple of weeks, I absolutely refuse to pick an ACC team this year. I think there are 12 guys that should make the first team. I'm not doing it. I think Jawad Williams belongs on that first team. And I he, think he is an unbelievably great player. And he very well could be. I mean, he's, he's on a team that has so many stars. Though, right. Everybody pops up, but he does a lot of little things that help make that Tar Heel team better. You know, somebody just put a gun to my head and said, I got to pick five. So what do you want me to do, Mike? <laughs> Let him pull the trigger. I mean, I... <laughs> You know, your money or your life, the old Jack Benning line. I'm thinking about 44-22 under a minute to go. Just constant defensive pressure by Duke. And again, trying to take away the passing. And look how far out they force the beginning of the offense where Diaz has to start. That's a tremendous advantage for the defense. And look at the way he forced that. Diaz did not have a shot. And yet he was going to put it up from 17 feet. And now it is really getting emotional. Well, it is. When you're getting spanked like this, an opponent gets really upset. You take a look how far Diaz starts. Here comes the hedge by Randolph. And he's forced out even further. Now you got a double team with Nelson helping. Quick hands inside. Imagine having to face that 40 minutes a game in a situation. Like that. That's what Blair's team yeah. is. And Diaz was nailed by his own man. Hamilton came over the top, the 250-pound center. There's the double team on Diaz. Harris was open. He lost it to Nelson. Demarcus Nelson, that rims out. Reggie Love with a follow. That's blocked by Hamilton. There's the follow and blocked again. And Miami doing everything it can to keep Duke off the board. There's Height with a spinning move. He's going to try to score, and he's fouled. 
Well, down 22, there aren't an awful lot of moral victories. But again, the hustle right here, just a little bit to get a hand on Nelson. And then the blocks come fast and furious right here. Miami averages five blocks a game, but tremendous job defensively. And then they come down and they get an opportunity at the basket. Height, another terrific score. He's fourth in the ACC, and he's a 87% free throw shooter, has seven points tonight. Well, that's more than he had the last time they played Duke. Two for seven from the field, and he was pretty much held in check in that game. Forty-four twenty-four with seven seconds to go. Ewing. That'll be the first half. It was all J.J. Redick in the first half. He nearly scored as many points as the Miami Hurricanes did. Forty-four twenty-four. Duke. Let's join Reese Davis in the studio for the UPS halftime report. We're at Duke at the half, and it's Blue Devils 44, Miami 24. Welcome back to Cameron Moore Stadium, everybody. Mike Patrick, Glenn Elmore, our entire ESPN crew. If you're Duke, this is what you hope for if, if you're Miami. This is what you were afraid of. Absolutely, and it's the Duke defense who really set the tone. You know, they forced 12 turnovers, six of them steals. In the open floor, Duke able to convert 14 points off of turnovers. They've done a tremendous job there. But on the offense, Miami still is yet to find an answer for J.J. Redick. And I guess out there with that kind of range, there is no answer. As Redick just started feeling it right championship on ESPN begins March 19th. You think color. We think ink. You think how to grow your business. We think how to supply it. We're Office Depot, and we're offering a compact Presario PC featuring the Intel Pentium 4 processor with HD technology and 17-inch LCD monitor for just $849.99 after rebates until March 12th. You take care of business. We take care of you. Office Depot. Taking care of The list of the most extraordinary images ever captured. We humbly submit. Height with a miss, Williams with another rebound. Height a little frustrated that time he thought he got hit on the arm. But that's the kind of play, if you're going to play one on one, that's the kind of play you've got to maximize your athleticism and height dribbling to the spot, elevating, and just couldn't get the ball to the basket. Look at the spacing that Duke has on the floor. They just spread it so beautifully and get guys open. Reddick misses a shot, but he will draw the foul. Well, Mike, that's a great point, and that's about discipline. You know, that's about everybody being on the same page, recognizing when it's their turn, they'll get the ball. The reason why you don't have good spacing in many instances is because guys get antsy. They want to touch the ball. They start cheating a little bit in, in, and it makes it easier on the defense. And we're sorry for the uh, technical problem we had there for a couple of minutes. Glad you're all back with us, where Duke is now leading 45-24. J.J. Redick, 6 out of 6 from the free throw line, 19 points. He averages 22 and a half, the leader in the Atlantic Coast Conference, and he is perfect, as he usually is, from the free throw line again tonight, 46-24. But technical difficulties, they missed all that good stuff? Just the parts that you said. <laughs> See if Diaz can get on track here in the second half. Boy, Ewing really did a good job. Didn't buy the fake at all. He ends up picking up the foul. But that's frustrating when you're an offensive player like Diaz, who averages 18 and a half points a game. Now you give him your best head and body fake, and he's still in your face. shot has really been off. And it certainly has. It's either been too short or too long. And again, it, to me, I find that strange with a guy with that type of elevation who can jump over the defenses to miss that bad. 
Reddick with a miss. Williams with a follow. That time Sheldon Williams just fought and fought to get good position to screen his man off the glass. Duke has doubled Miami at 48-24. Diaz lost it on the way in, saved by King. I mean, they can't even hit point blank shots no. right now. That's, a lot of that has to do with anxiety. They start feeling like you got to get it all back in one shot. That relax a little bit. Just whittle down the lead when you have the opportunity. Yeah, they have uh, had so few chances against the Duke defense, and then when they get it, it's got to be frustrating for Frank Hate. They do get the chances, and they can't convert. Right now, look at the job he has done. Everybody thought Miami would be such a weak system coming into the ACC, joining the big boys. Same with Virginia Tech. You know, there's going to be a, a couple of free passes for teams all around the league as Reddick is wide open for three and missed it. Williams with another offensive rebound. But it has not been a free pass for anybody playing the Canes or Virginia Tech. Well, certainly not. And again, if you look at Miami last year, in the Big East, they only had four conference wins, four and 12, and that's the reason why everyone thought they would be the doormat this year. But it looks like, at least the way this game is going, they're going to wind up seven and nine in the conference, and that's not too shabby for their first year. Especially in a conference where, back in November, five teams were in the top nine, and seven were in the top 19 in the country. And you come in and join that, you expect to get whacked and they have not. They have played very, very well and can hold their head high. Well, the teams that are below them in the standings, they haven't lost to any of them. That's right. Essentially, they beat the teams they're supposed to beat based upon the standing. And they've taken their lumps against Duke and others. And here's what teams have done in their first year in the league. Georgia Tech, of course, had maybe the worst major college basketball program you ever saw when it came into the ACC to start. Florida State had some outstanding players on that team when they entered the ACC. In fact, they were 11 and 5, and their first win was at North Carolina. Not a bad start. 54 24. Duke is just overwhelming Miami, and in the second half, Miami is yet to hit a field goal. Duke shooting 50% so far. And except for Robert Heights' 18 footer, those shots, those five attempts in this half have all been pretty much right in the paint. Yeah. And they've rimmed the basket. They've come up short. I ain't having a tough time getting it in. Finally does to Frisbee. And Diaz looking for a screen. Second leading scorer in the ACC has been frustrated by Duke's defense tonight. Height is left alone. Got away from Reggie Love. Can't hit the shot, but it's out to Miami. Yeah, you talk about coaching. This has got to be one of the best jobs Mike Krzyzewski has ever done, Len. I mean, he came into the season with a very, very thin team. And throughout the season, he has lost one key player after another to injury or illness. He's going to go into the ACC tournament in Washington uh, without Sean Dockery. And somehow, he has still made it work number six and has another brilliant record. Well, he's been a juggler this year, no question about it. Has to change lineups. Not so much as starting five and score here, but to shuttle guys in and out, put them in positions where they can be successful. And you got to give up big props to that big three, Reddick, Ewing, and Williams for their consistency. That's what allows Mike Krzyzewski to be able to bring guys in and out. And they have played so many minutes that big three. And here's Sheldon Williams called for a foul inside. And Mike Shevsky retrieves the basketball and is a little slow to give it back so he can make his opinion known. ESPNU be there from the beginning. Boy, that's going to be a great opportunity going forward to check out championships and coverage for an awful lot of other sports, not just the major sports. Yep. Talking about baseball, softball, wrestling, volleyball. 
I can't wait. Here's the reach in steal. Ewing ahead of the pack. Oh, and they just called the technical on Daniel Ewing for hanging on to the rim. Holy cow. Well, terrific anticipation by Daniel Ewing, whose defense all year has been underrated. There's the flush, and it looked like his momentum would have carried him into the fourth right. row had he not held right. on. I, he, I, you know, I'm just anticipating that the reason he did it was for his own protection. There wasn't anybody under him, but he's going so fast. If he doesn't hang on to the rim, he's got a chance to hurt himself. But to the official's defense, at least from his angle, there was no other player underneath. Could have looked that way. At least in his mind, there was no real danger presented. You take a look right here. Nobody around him. I mean, Ewing is not that kind of player. No, he's not. And you can see the way his legs were flying out. Had he not done that, his momentum would have carried him into somebody's lap. 66-27 is the crowd chants Ewing's name, and this basket is going to be waved off. Is that a charge? Offensive foul. Yeah, I, I'm not so sure. I don't like that either. Even Mike Krzyzewski is saying, what? You know, let him have it. Yeah, that may have been a makeup. But you don't need that. You don't need that here. Not now. 19, uh, 29-point lead. No, it's 56 to 27 with 14.50 to go in the ball game. Duke on its way to win number 22. Reddick wide open, maybe too wide open. Williams with a follow. That basket is going to count and a foul as well. Well, that was total brain lock right there. After the foul was called, the shot was still on the rim against this 2-3 zone Sheldon Williams just getting any type of position he wants and what is Frisbee thinking I don't know Diaz commits the foul and Frisbee just goes up and knocks it away so he's guilty of goaltending Diaz gets his 13th foul Williams with his ninth rebound hits the free throw and has 10 points so on his way to another double double it will be his 16th of the year and the 34th of his brilliant career. And there is a three from Diaz. Finally get that young man free, and he shot that one in rhythm. And he hasn't had his best game tonight, obviously, but the thing that supports my position, he should be on the All-ACC team, is he averages 24 points and five rebounds, 50% from the field against ranked teams in the 18th games that they played against ranked teams those are his numbers so Guillermo Diaz does save his best for the best tonight is not one of those nights as Duke really right. put the clamps on him and Robert Height just committed a holding foul on that rebound so Duke gets the ball back to Marcus Nelson into Ewing for three too strong Nelson got the rebound there's Reddick and I'd much rather see J.J. Reddick put it on the floor and penetrate yeah. than to shoot a wide open three. But even then, Reddick's effective in drawing the defense in distance. And Demarcus Nelson hits a shot. He has seven. Reddick has turned himself into a complete player. Diaz blocked by Sheldon Williams. Three on one break. Run to perfection by Daniel Ewing. And a standing ovation for the Blue Devils on senior night. The number six team in the country is ripping Miami. top 64 to 30 over Miami and one thing that has characterized Duke throughout the years is unselfishness and great passing well it's bad enough that they're shooting so well and guys like JJ Reddick really getting off look at the attention he draws they don't want him to get to the basket and he's got the ability out of that triple team to find somebody on penetration then it's a second pass 
which is always the case when you catch a team in rotation defensively. The second pass will find an open shooter. But Redick obviously able to create more than just shots for himself. We've got 13 26 to go in the game. Duke again doubling Miami at 64 to 32. to six spurt to start this half. They started the game with a 19-6 burst. Well, here particularly in Cameron, that's Groundhog's Day, man. Every, every time a team comes in, it's that beginning of the second half burst. And Diaz, again, too much one-on-one, -on -one, draws the offensive foul, and that is four on Guillermo Diaz. And see, this is the part of the game. We just showed J.J. Reddick's ability to draw defenders and kick and make people better. That's the element of Guillermo Diaz's game that he needs to work on between now and next season. He's got the other skills. Shavlik Randolph, one of the best at drawing offensive fouls. There's always been a couple of guys on this team under Mike Krzyzewski who are outstanding at forcing the other team into mistakes. Randolph reaches in, makes a steal, but can only save it to King. King gets it outside and Harris will knock it down. Boy, Anthony Duke. Harris, who's the 31% long range shooter. I'm sorry, Mike. I was going to say Duke has been so outstanding in stripping the ball today. I can't tell you how many times they've gotten a finger on it or a hand on it, really throwing Miami off rhythm offensively. Reddick, another deep three. Williams rebounds, fight for the ball, and he, he and Height are tied up. And the possession arrow will give the ball back to Miami. Reggie Love will come in for Duke. Frisbee will come in for the Hurricanes. If there's one thing that Frank Hayes is going to take with him as he leaves is that you cannot zone Duke with Sheldon Williams in that paint able to roam around and get rebounds at will. And that's why he's been able to get in front of people, root himself in front of the basket, and get second shot opportunity after second shot opportunity for his team, which they've done pretty much on the second half. Diaz remains on the floor with those four fouls. He is their shooter. He is their best offensive weapon. Here's an offensive rebound. And Miami leads the ACC in that category. Height had a wide open shot, gets it to Diaz. He misses a wide open three. You were talking at the beginning of the game about Miami's defense. It appeared they went with a box and one and started uh, trying to shut down J.J. Redick. I thought that was an outstanding way to go, but Redick just burned him to a crisp. Well, he burned him, and then what happened is started to get turnovers and really converting those turnovers. And the deficit really prevented Frank Hayes from further exploring that box and one. He had to go to some man, had to go to some pressure, try to find some combination that was going to get his team some easy opportunities or generate some offense. Diaz, nice offensive move, couldn't hit him, but there's the follow. Good basket by Gary Hamilton, the big guy out of L.A. He has half a dozen. Duke has had it its way from the very beginning. Be playing defense against Shavlik, Shavlik Randolph. Follow is blocked by Hamilton and taken away by Hamilton against Demarcus Nelson. Harris goes to the left hand. Nice move down the left side of the lane. Well, it's a little different right now for penetration without Sheldon Williams, the leading shot blocker in the conference, in the paint underneath. I think Mike Krzyzewski wants to talk about it. And Mike wants to talk about stuff going forward. He's looking for execution, knowing that the guys on the floor right now, the support guys, Mel Keone, Nelson, uh, Randolph, they're going to be counted on, particularly in the ACC tournament. And we haven't seen David McClure tonight. Uh, they're going to need David McClure as well. And there's McClure. Ask and you shall receive. Right? Young man out of Richfield, Connecticut, who missed seven with an injury to his knee. Here's Reddick. And what he has done in constant motion, trying to get those openings. And now, you know, J.J. has played so many minutes this year. And it looks like he might be wearing down a little bit right here. 
Can you imagine 11 games?